Welcome, Pathway family. I am so grateful to be here with you today. I'm grateful that you're here as we kick off our Christmas series, A Gift for the King. Now, this series is really going to be all about how we understand God's greatest gift to us that changed our lives, the priceless gift of Jesus. And then really, what is our response to that? What is our response and action as we engage with that? And what is ultimately our gift to the king. I I love Christmas time. I do. I absolutely love Christmas. It's a supernatural time. It's special. Uh, I'm a girl dad. I've got two girls, eight and three, and I love seeing them engage in all things Christmas, right? The the smiles, the laughter, the memories, the the parties, the events, the, the time at home, the Christmas food. The Christmas food is awesome, right? And the Christmas movies, I love the Christmas movies. I'm not talking about the Hallmark movies. If you're a Hallmark fan, that's great. But man, I'm talking about Home Alone and Elf and Polar Express and Christmas Vacation and Die Hard. Like all of the greats, right? Yeah, Die Hard, it's a Christmas movie, right? It's all up there. There's Christmas trees and lights. Thank you for the affirmation that you agree on that, right? I love Christmas time. One thing I love about Christmas is there just seems to be a little bit more joy. Like, people are a little bit nicer. Uh, They just, they give a little bit more. They're more generous. They open more doors. Now, not in traffic. People are not nicer during Christmas time when they're driving, right? And I see some of you out there. You're out there driving. You're honking horns, and you're impatient. They're not nicer in the car, but just Christmas time. It's a special time, and people are a little bit nicer. You know, this year, uh, I've been married now for 13 years. I have an amazing wife who I do not deserve, and I tell her that as often as I can. But I got to tell you, she's a little bit over the top when it comes to Christmas. She she just is. She's just a little bit over the top, and I want to see if some of you know someone like that. So raise your hand if you know someone that's just a little bit over the top when it comes to Christmas. I see those hands. No, I I didn't say point at them. (laughs) You're getting yourself in trouble. That's not my fault. You shouldn't point at them, right? We all know someone that's maybe a little bit over the top when it comes to Christmas. I'll I'll give you an example. My eight-year-old, she's a fun-loving, full of joy, not always the most serious, but she comes to me one day, and she came to me in October. So I'm going to do a little calendar lesson. You have Christmas in December, Then you have November, and it's got Thanksgiving, and the month before that is October. It's Halloween. This was before Halloween, and uh, my eight-year-old comes to me, and she says, Dad, real serious, I got to talk to you. I said, okay, baby, what do you want to talk to me about? She says, it's about mom. And I'm like, oh, what is she going to say? And she goes, she bought another Christmas tree. (laughs) Oh, come on, you were with her. You were supposed to stop that. And she was like, no, I love that we have all the Christmas trees. You know, last year I got to deliver a message around this time of the year, and I said that we had 15 Christmas trees in the house. So if you can do the math, we now have 16. Like, I think someone, I I think my wife believes that Christmas is like a birthday cake. Every year you just add a candle to it. Like, we don't have to add another tree. But no, she does an amazing job of just creating this experience for our family to really enjoy Christmas time and to have our hearts in the right posture Uh, to be able to have it be a special season. I believe Christmas, this Christmas journey, this season can be special for you. But we've got to have the right priorities, the right values. We've got to have the right um, perspective this Christmas to make it special for us. You know, I I heard a story just a few weeks ago that I think will stick with me forever about values. And the story is about Glenn and his family. There were missionaries in China And when you're missionaries in China, you don't say that you're missionaries or you don't say that you're a Christian or that you have a church. You've got a ministry because that's not allowed. That's illegal there. And so over decades, they built this fantastic underground church in China that was doing some amazing things. But then at some point, the government found out about it and they sent the military, they sent some soldiers to them and they said, hey, we know what you're doing and there's going to be some consequences because you're not supposed to do that here. So then they had like a couple weeks of anxiety of what does this mean? What are these consequences going to be? So a soldier shows up a couple weeks later and says, hey, we're going to put you on a plane. We're going to fly you out of China. You're never allowed to be here again. And uh, you've got a couple hours to pack up all of your things, but you can only take 200 pounds of things with you. We'll be back in, in a couple hours to pick up your things and we'll fly you out of here. So Glenn 
He's going through, he's like, okay, 200 pounds, so he's got his computer he wants to take and his Bibles and commentaries and sentimental things and the wife, she's got the sentimental things, the picture frames and the cooking things that she wants to take. And the kids, like everything's valuable to a kid. Like how do the kids pick between what toys and stuffed animals they want to keep and they want to, you know, leave there? You know, they're going through all this, they get their pile of stuff, they weigh it, and it's over 200 pounds. So they argue and negotiate, and they decide what not to keep, and they weigh it again, and it's over 200 pounds. So they got to decide what's valuable, what's not valuable. They argue, they negotiate, they finally get it down to 200 pounds. The soldier shows up and says, are you ready to go? They say, we're ready to go. They say, is that your stuff? That's our stuff. They say, is it 200 pounds? It's 200 pounds. The soldier then says, did you weigh the kids? Glenn says, no, we didn't weigh the kids. The soldier says, weigh the kids. That's part of the 200 pounds. Like, did you feel that? Like, in that instant, Glenn and his wife and his kids had a value change, had a perspective change. If we've got to weigh the kids, all of the things that we were arguing about, that we were negotiating, that we're trying to see what was valuable or not, we just want to leave with our lives. We just want to be able to get out of here. I think sometimes we need that value change, that perspective, Right? This Christmas journey that we have, we all have the exact same amount of time. We get the same amount of days until Christmas, same amount of hours, minutes, seconds. But many of us, if we're not intentional, we're going to let Christmas sneak up on us and say, well, I just ran out of time. Just didn't have enough time to really engage in what God wanted me to do, but we did all these other things. We're going to say we have a time problem. But in reality, our culture, we don't have a time problem. We've got a value problem. We have a priority problem. We've got a perspective problem. We've all got the same amount of time. So I'll start this message with this question for you. Will you approach Christmas this year, your Christmas journey this year, as one to worship the gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ? Or will you approach the Christmas journey this year and get caught up in the obligations, the expectations, the parties, and all the things, and time will just escape you? You won't be as intentional. That's a question we all have. This Christmas series, we are following the wise men or the magi and their journey from the east to Bethlehem and see how they worshiped the king. Now for us to get to know the, the magi, we're going to put up some facts on here so we know who they were and where they came from. The first thing you need to know about the magi is they were experts in astrology and astronomy. Like they studied the stars, they knew prophetic timetables, they were world-renowned experts in this area. The second thing you need to know about them is they came from the east, most likely in Babylon. Don't know exactly where they came from, but most likely in Babylon, they were respected by kings. Like, so they could travel from country to country. They could get audience with the royalty, their integrity, their character, their expertise. It was respected by kings from all over. Their journey, it took around 800 to 900 miles. And that took around four to five months. Most likely they traveled by camel. And then these last two facts, I didn't know uh, as a kid. And so when I figured this out as I got older, it blew my mind. I was like, what? The nativity scene isn't quite accurate. First one you need to know is there may not have been three wise men. There could have been seven. There could have been 12. We don't know the exact number, but um, we're not for sure that there was only three. And then the last one is the Magi, they were not there uh, the night that Jesus were, was born. They, they showed up several months later to meet Jesus and to worship him and to present him with gifts, but they weren't there on that night. So we're going to be digging into this story about the Magi. I want to go and invite you um, to open up your Bibles. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 2. Uh, Matthew is the only gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that talks about the Magi. So you can open up your Bibles, you can follow along on the message notes, or you can follow along on the screen. We're going to start with verse 1 to see what we can learn about the journey of the Magi. It says this, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. 
So they were in Babylon. They had studied uh, the stars. They knew prophetic timetables. They saw the star. They set out on this four to five month journey. They arrive in Jerusalem, which isn't Bethlehem where Jesus was born, but it was really close. And so you get there, say, hey, we saw the star. We're here to worship the king. Um, Where's he at? So this news had traveled to King Herod, and he... um, he was deeply disturbed, Scripture would say, right? He, he knew that he may lose power, he may lose influence, like who is this king? And so he tries to play a trick on them that we won't dig into on this message, but you can go back and read it. The Magi didn't fall for it, and we're going to pick up here in verse 9. It says, After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened up their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now there are many things that we can learn about the journey of the Magi to worship the king, to, to meet and to worship Jesus. The first thing that we need to know to make our Christmas season special is we need to follow God's signs. Now, I've got a confession to make, and this isn't easy to confess as a man, but I'm amongst friends here, I think, and so I I feel like I can say this to you. I can get lost easily. I just can't. I can get lost easily, and um, actually, let me explain that a little bit more. I don't get lost. I know where I am. And I know where I want to go, but I don't always know how to get there. Like, I could go to a friend's house five different times, and you would think I know exactly how to get there. The sixth time I go, I've got to pop it in GPS so that it can guide me to that spot. Right? Anybody like that? You've just got to rely on that guidance to be able to get there. Question for you. Do do you get lost easily? Maybe not just driving, but maybe in your life. You know where you are. And you know some of the things that you're searching for. You're searching for good friends, just a tight-knit community, for meaning, for purpose, for, for peace, to searching to get out of some of these strangleholds of temptations that you keep falling into. You know where you are, you know where you want to go, but you don't know how to get there. And really, left to your own instincts, the, own, the things that you try, you've maybe had some short-term success, but you never actually found that. Right? You've tried this and that and this and that, but you're still searching and you don't quite know how to get there because we need to not rely on ourselves and our own emotions, our own thoughts. We've got to follow God's signs. Can you imagine the Magi? Like, even if they were experts in the stars and they knew these prophetic timetables, they saw the star come up and they were like, that means the king of the Jews is going to be born. They're like, let's set out on this five-month journey, 800-plus miles to go and worship him. Like, how did they make it? They arrived in their destination. They didn't have an iPhone, GPS, a Google. They just had God's signs to take them. I'm sure there were times that they doubted. There's times that fear crept in. There's times that the people in their party were like, I don't know if we're going in the right direction or should we turn back or this isn't worth it. So they got there by following God's signs. You know, to make our Christmas season special this year, to make it supernatural, we need to follow God's signs. You know, God will speak to you. God is speaking to you. That's why a lot of you are here listening to this message right now, because God led you to Pathway Church. God led you to be here to hear this message and messages like it. You know, there's five different ways that if we listen, God will speak to us. The first way that God will speak to us is through God's Word. He'll speak to us through the 66 books of the Bible. There's promises, commands, sins to avoid, things to do. There's guidance, all in that. He'll speak to us through God's word. He'll speak to us through prayer. Like we actually take the time and not just give our list of things to God and all right, here's your list of things that we want and now you can do those. But if we pray and then we stop to listen, we have that heart posture to build that relationship with him, he'll speak to us through prayer. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit that guides us, that provides comfort to us. He speaks to us through people, right? That person that gives you that word of comfort that guidance. He'll speak to us in situations. Open doors, closed doors. This Christmas season, God will speak to us, but we've got to be seekers, right? 
We've got to search it out. We've got to put ourselves in the right environments to, to see those God signs. And then we can't just listen to them. We've got to obey them. You know, I, I've realized this year I, I'm 39 years old now, and I feel every bit of 39 years old. I'm getting older. Like, just this year, we had our 20-year high school reunion. It didn't seem that long ago I was out there with the pigskin playing football and basketball, and, and now I'm feeling older, right? It wasn't that long ago I was leading a young adult group here at Pathway Church, and I was a part of their peer group, and I don't feel like a peer of young adults anymore. I'm getting older. You know, I'm reminded of it every time I wake up. My, my back, my knees remind me, my bald head remind me, the fact that I got to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the restroom once or twice in the night that reminds me not only am I getting old, but I'm old, right? Now, the truth is, this doesn't always happen this way, but as you get older, you can become wiser. You have more experiences that you can learn from. You can learn from other people's experiences. It doesn't always work that way, but as you age, you can get wiser. One of the ways I'm trying to get wiser is to know myself a little bit better. When it comes to like Christmas and Christmas gifts, one thing I've realized about myself is if my wife gives me a, um, a list of what she wants for Christmas time, and she makes it very specific, maybe even sends me the link of what she wants, I knock it out of the park. Well, I'm really good about ordering that. I can wrap it. I can put it under the Christmas tree. We can celebrate that. But if she just gives me some hints and, and maybe sometimes some very obvious hints, I, 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 can, I can not always do a great job on that gift. It can go right over my head and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see the hint. You know, to, to help us understand how we can follow God's signs, I want to give you some very obvious things that you can do this Christmas season, this journey, to be able to have the right atmosphere and environment to understand how God is speaking to you so that you can follow God's signs. First thing I would say is come to church. Each week of this Christmas series, make it a priority to be here at church, to listen to the message. Our teaching team, we do an excellent job of trying to um, unpack God's word, but then give you some applicable things that you can put in your life as you respond to God's word. So come to church each week, not just as Christmas, but let that build a habit that you'll continue to do after Christmas time. The second thing I'll say is if you're a parent or a grandparent, if you have kids in our kid ministry, uh, we are handing out these family advent calendars. It's a journey to the manger. It's got great activities and ways for your family to be able to engage in God's word this Christmas. We want to give that to you and allow you to do that with your kids because you're the spiritual hero of your kid's life. So engage in that. Last thing that we can do is we can uh, look at Luke chapter 2. I, I'd say each day, go to Luke chapter 2. It's, the, it's about the Christmas story of Jesus Christ and read a couple of verses or read the chapter. Engage in God's word. That's how we can follow God's signs. Now the second thing that we can do to make our Christmas journey special is to be grateful for God's gift. Right, Matthew 2, it talked about how the Magi, when they had seen the star, when they left Jerusalem, they saw the star settle over the house where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It says they were overjoyed. They were ecstatic. They were elated. They had this four-plus-month journey. They finally got there. They knew they had arrived at the spot, and they were overjoyed. Then they saw the mother of Jesus, they saw Mary, they bowed down and they worshiped Jesus, and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Right? They were grateful. I, I, I truly believe that after they met Jesus, it changed their lives. It changed the trajectory of their life, and they were grateful for that. They gave significant, deep meaning gifts. I got a question for you. Are you grateful for how God is working in your life? And not just a word that you say, I'm grateful, thank you, thank you God. Hey, is it just a word that you say, or maybe you get so busy this Christmas you, you forget to even say that. Or does your gratefulness, does it help you to respond in action and engage in the hope, the peace, the purpose, the joy, the love that God has given you through his son Jesus Christ? Are you grateful for that? You know, there's some ways that we can be reminded of our gratefulness, of just what God has done and is doing in our lives and also Pathway Church. 
This Christmas season, we can be grateful for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Grateful for God the Father, eh? God the Father who created the universe and the world and knows each and every person, but let's not lose fact that he knows you, that he created you, that he desires that relationship with you, that he wants to hear from you. He wants to know our needs and our wants and our requests. He wants that relationship specifically with you, that we have a good, good father. He's kind, he's good, he's compassionate, full of mercy, forgiveness. He created a way so that we would have a restored relationship with him. Be grateful for God the Father. We can also be grateful this Christmas season for God the Son, for Jesus Christ, for King Jesus. And here's the thing, church. All the things that we think nobody knows about us, all the thoughts, the the sins, the mistakes, the the things that we've wrestled with in our life, that we think we've hid it from everybody, Jesus knows, right? All the sins that we've had in our past life, all the ways that we've hurt other people, that we've hurt ourselves, that we we knew what was right or wrong, but we still chose wrong because we just couldn't fight that temptation enough. Jesus knows all of those things. Even today, he he knows the doubts you may have, the fears you may have, the questions you may have. And in the future, he knows all of our future sins, all the things that we will do. And despite all of that, despite of all the things that we've done, that we've tried, and we've had these prayers that maybe we've given to to God. We've said, please, I'll, I'll never do this again. I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. And we keep falling into that temptation. Jesus knows that. But despite all of that, We can be grateful and we can be reminded that Jesus still went on the cross for you and I. He was mocked, he was beaten, he was pierced, he was made fun of, he was spit on. He was ultimately tortured and murdered on the cross. His sacrifice to us, his sacrifice to you, so that we may be forgiven of our sins. Despite all the ways we have tried to shun him, he still that specifically for us. We can be grateful for God the Son. We can also be grateful for God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that comforts us, that guides us, that for many of us, it brought us here to listen to this message. We can be grateful for God the Spirit. You know, when we're truly grateful, when anyone is truly grateful, what always leads out of that is generosity. If you have someone that's truly grateful for something, generosity will always follow that. You show me someone who's fully generous, I'll show you someone who is fully grateful. You show me someone who isn't generous, I'll show you someone who's a little bit discontent. Who feels like maybe they've had the short end of the stick their whole life. You show me someone who's not generous, I'll show you someone who is really confused about just how good God has been in their life. But you show me someone who's generous show you someone who's grateful the thing is once that generosity flows from the gratitude that we have it adds to more gratefulness of just how he's working in our lives you know if we're not careful this christmas season it's going to be all about us all about the things that we want the christmas parties the events the obligations the friends the family the food the movies and none of that is bad right Oh, that's good stuff. But if we're not careful, we're going to forget to respond to the gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ. We're going to forget to to be like the Magi, to go on this journey, to be overjoyed for how he's working in our lives, then to present him gifts. Not because we think that's what we're supposed to do, but because it flows from gratitude that we have. You know, in a journey, there's many intersections that you'll have, many forks in the roads. And I believe and I hope and I pray that we're at an intersection today. That maybe this message has allowed us to have different values, different priorities, different perspective. That we truly understand the gift that God gave us. That makes us be overjoyed with gratitude. But now we get to decide what is our response going to be. Right, the Magi, their response was they wanted to worship and they sacrificed their time and their treasure to worship Jesus. 
And their gifts, their gifts weren't leftovers. Their gifts weren't just small things they had in the house or pocket change. They went on a four to five month journey, 800 to 900 miles. When they got there, they were overjoyed in their destination. And they gave deep, deep meaning gifts, significant gifts, so they could worship Jesus and all of the things that they were going to do in their lives. What are we going to do this Christmas season? We're encouraging and challenging all of our Pathway families to be full of gratitude of what God's done in your life and then to bring a gift to the King this Christmas journey. A gift that has deep meaning, a gift that is significant, a gift that would tie our heart more to God and the freedom that he has given us. And when you give a gift to God through Pathway Church, you get to help fund all of the things that Pathway Church is about. You get to be a part of the story of the kingdom, of the impact that God is having all over. There's so many stories. So you get to be a part of the story that Pathway Church has global outreach partners in five continents and over 20 countries. You get to be a part of the story of of what our outreach partners are doing in Cambodia, of rescuing women and kids from human trafficking. You get to be a part of the story of we've got partners in one of the largest slums in the world, in Nairobi, Africa, And we've got partners there that are building community centers and schools and and medical teams and, and churches. And they're spreading the hope, the love, the peace of Jesus to other people. You get to be a part of that story. You get to be a part of the story of churches being planted in India through our partners. And the community centers and the way we're building up pastors there to go out and spread the gospel. And what about right here in our local community? Go and talk to schools in Goddard, Kansas. Go and talk to schools in West Wichita, in Mays, in Valley Center. Ask them for stories of how Pathway Church has been faithful and has showed up year after year after year to help and to serve their kids, their students, their families, their staff. You can be a part of that story when we give to God through Pathway Church. You can be a part of the stories of what God is doing here in our homeless community. That we're not just giving a hand out to our homeless friends, but we're giving a hand up and providing a way for them to get back on their feet. You get to be a part of that. What about what God is doing in the Hutchinson Correctional Facility? I love hearing these stories. They've got former gang leaders who come to know Jesus Christ. They share the hope of Jesus to others, and then they're baptizing other people in the correctional facility at a Pathway Church service. You get to be a part of that. You could be a part of what God is doing in the Sedgwick County work release. We've got pathway services there each and every week where they get to hear God's word, to follow God's signs, and to to continue to go out to look more like Jesus. There's incredible stories happening there. What about right here at Pathway Church? Each and every week we have people that come here for the first time. And they've been searching And they've been searching, but they don't quite know how to get to that destination. But they come here and they're welcomed by some amazing volunteers. They get coffee and a snack and they hear the message. And it's one of those messages that they feel like is just spoken directly to them. Before long, they went from being a stranger to a friend, a friend to a family, and a family to someone now that is going out on the mission of Pathway Church. Right Next weekend here, we get to see baptisms at all of our campuses We get to celebrate people coming to know Jesus Christ and then going public with their faith. That is something that should make us overjoyed and elated and ecstatic that we get to be a part of that story. Last thing I'll mention is our kids and our student ministries. Right? Our kids ministry and then Ignite in middle school and high school. And if you go and talk to some of those leaders and you hear story after story after story of lives being changed here at all of our campuses and them going out and spreading the hope of Jesus to others, we get to be a part of those stories. You know, this Christmas journey, as we're full of gratitude, and from that true gratitude will outflow generosity, we want to give you some gift ideas. Right? Sometimes we got to make it simple. We're going to give you some gift ideas of some gifts that you can give to God through Pathway Church that these will actually fund everything we do here at Pathway Church. You'll be a part of the story of how God will go out and change others' lives just how he's done with yours. And so go to, to, to be able to go to these gift ideas, we're going to put a QR code here on the screen. 
I want to go and invite you. You can grab out your phone and you can go to the QR code. It will take you to a website, a gift for the king. And on this website, you're going to have many different ideas of how you can be generous to the king this year, how you can be generous to Jesus. And many of those ideas that are listed there are related specifically to what I just talked about, to the stories that you can be a part of. There's also these envelopes on your chair backs. I want to invite you to go ahead and grab an envelope and actually to take it with you. The QR code is on there. It's got different, uh, the, the web page. It's got ways that you can write on that envelope of how God is working in your life. Take this envelope. Put it in a spot that you can pray about it, that you can begin to go on this journey of what will your gift to the king be this Christmas. You know, that's what Andrew and I need to do. I need to start praying about what my gift to the king will be this Christmas. And Andrew needs to pray about that, and then we need to come together and pray what our gift will be. And each time we do this, a supernatural thing happens. Each time that we really dig in and we, we search and we're hungry to seek on what God wants us to do, and we've got this heart posture of not just listening but following his lead, and God always brings us to a spot that we can make a gift that has deep, deep meaning. But not only is it about a gift that we worship God with, but also brings our heart closer to God. It brings our heart closer to each other as we can sacrifice for him because he made the ultimate sacrifice for us. You know, at the end of all of our messages, we've been doing this I will statement. So I want to encourage you and challenge you this week with this I will statement. I will pray about my gift for the king. Just like the Magi went on this journey, at the end of it, they worshiped Jesus with gifts that had deep, deep meaning. I want you to go on this journey this Christmas season that can begin today to begin to pray about what your gift to the king will be. We'll have a moment here at the end of our service to begin that journey of you praying about it and seeking God and being hungry to see what your gift will be. You know, I gave you this question at the very beginning of service. Will you approach Christmas this year as a way that you can worship Jesus and worship the gift that God gave us in him? Or will you approach Christmas this year and get caught up in the obligations, the expectations, the parties, and time will slip away? Will Christmas this year be more about you? Or will it be about God and his gift? And what will our response be in action as we engage in that? Would you bow your heads and let's pray about this? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your gift. Father, we're grateful that you know each and every one of us and that in action you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, so that through him, through our belief in him, we may find that meaning, that purpose, that peace, that joy, that hope. Father, I pray that as we heard this message, that we became overjoyed an ecstatic of just how truly good you have been in our lives. And Father, I pray this Christmas journey, we would be able to bring you a gift. There would be a gift to your son, Jesus Christ, that would show that we're able to worship him and sacrifice our time and our treasure to just have him understand how grateful we truly are. Our Father, we gave them this I will statement. And for those willing to go on the journey to pray about their gift to the king this season. With everybody's eyes so closed, I want to invite you to raise your hand and say, I'm willing to pray. I'm willing to pray about my gift for the king this Christmas season. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for being willing to go on this journey. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for those willing to go on this journey. Father, as they read your word and they pray and they have conversations and the Holy Spirit would guide them all the ways that you speak to us, I pray that this Christmas season, as they pray about it and go on this journey, that you'd make it evident what that deep gift would be for them, what that meaningful gift would be. Now, Father, I know there's others that are in the room that they haven't yet made that decision to name your son Jesus the leader and the savior of their life. But maybe it was this message that spoke to them. They realized that you have been guiding them and giving them signs, and they realized that they've tried 
things after things after things to find that meaning and that purpose. And maybe it, it felt like their past has been holding them back from truly understanding the love and the gift that you gave them. But today, for anyone that's ready to make that decision, to name Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of their life, I just want to invite you to pray this prayer in the quietness of your heart after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I have sinned. I know that I have made mistakes in the past, but today I realize that despite all of that, you loved me so much, you gave your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. And today I name Jesus the leader and the savior of my life. Now for anyone that said that prayer for the first time, that named Jesus their leader and their savior, with everybody's eyes so closed, I want to invite you to raise your hand. You to raise your hand boldly to say, I took that step. I'm full of gratitude of how God brought me here, full of gratitude of how God is working in my life. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as a church family, we can come around those who made a decision for you. There would be a strong-knit community of good friends that would be on mission for you. Father, I pray you put people in their lives to help guide them as they begin this journey. Father, thank you for the reminder of how good you've been to us. Allow us to go on this journey this Christmas to bring you gifts of our worship. Father, we love you. We ask all of these things in the loving and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Hey, let's celebrate.